Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, my name is Adam Rook. I am one of the co-op coordinators here at the Laurier Co-op Office. I'm excited to be talking to you today about our arts and science co-op program specifically. Now we're gonna take about the next 15 minutes or so to go through uh, some more of the nitty gritty information for you so you have a good understanding of what the different range of programs are, um, how to apply, how to get in, uh, but then also I'm excited to be sharing that we have a current co-op student uh, who just wrapped up their last co-op term, who's gonna have the chance to speak at the end of the session and give you some kind of uh, first insights and, and that first perspective of being in the co-op program from a current student. So uh, looking forward to going through uh, and um, yeah, we'll get started here. Perfect, so uh, you first may be wondering what is co-op and how do I apply? The two big questions. Well, co-op is what we call a work integrated learning experience. And this is a chance for students to take what they've learned in the classroom, take that to a job for their co-op work term, apply that knowledge, but in turn, they're also gonna be able to take what they learn at the work term and bring that back to the classroom. And that's again, where that work integrated learning comes from. And it's a really great chance to get that hands-on practical experience uh, and explore some possible career paths for you uh, in your future. And another thing about Laurier's co-op programs here for arts and science, it is an optional program. So students do need to apply in order to get in uh, and you need to be enrolled in either an honors arts or science program. Um, I will add that it is a competitive application process. So I'm gonna go through the different co-op programs that we have and the eligibility requirements for each, um, but just know that all of those requirements are to get into an admissions interview. And in that interview, we're gonna be looking at four things. We're gonna be looking at your GPA, we're gonna be looking at your past work experience, your past volunteer experience, as well as your performance in the interview itself. And then we use those factors to decide who is able to be admitted into the co-op program and kind of continue through and start leading towards going out for your first work term. So the first programs that I'll talk about are, are the uh, arts and science programs here at Laurier. So if you are admitted to the Laurier Arts and Science Co-op programs, uh, you're gonna be going out for two four month work terms. And you're gonna see here that those actually happen during the spring of your second year and the spring of your third year. So it doesn't delay your graduation at all. You're gonna maintain your regular sequence as a student. And it can also be a great program structure for those that are highly involved with things at Laurier, such as different clubs or associations. A lot of those events happen during the fall and winter term, so you're still going to be on um, on campus or virtual, depending on the future here, um, um, have the chance to still be able to participate in those uh, clubs, associations, and different events. Some of our arts and science programs that are going to go out on work terms like this are programs such as communication studies, psychology, sociology, kinesiology, uh, environmental studies, languages, film studies, all of those programs have the chance to apply for the arts and science co-op program. In order to be eligible for an admissions interview for the arts and science co-op program, you need to have a 7.0 in your first year or a 7.0 in your honors and a 6.5 overall. And you also need to make sure that you've completed at least five credits um, by the end of August and no more than 7.5 credits. Um, if you're more than 7.5, you've progressed too far and you're not gonna be able to follow the sequencing that was laid out on the previous slide. So it's important if co-op is something that you're interested in in the future, is make sure that you're taking the time in your first year, engage in your academics, be focused on those, um, have the chance to maintain those GPAs, so that way you have an idea of what it is you need to achieve in order to be given that admissions interview that we talked about before. Another program that we have here for arts and science students is our applied water science program. This is more of a unique program for students and it's really looking at the physical, chemical, and biological properties of water. Uh, and students are gonna take courses in chemistry, geography, environmental studies. So it's very much a multidisciplinary program. Um, if you are admitted into this co-op program, this is the sequence that you're actually gonna be going through. So you're gonna be going out for your work terms in the first one will be the winter term of your third year and you're gonna go out for eight months and then you're gonna go out in the spring term of your fourth year for a total of eight months. Um, so this is a little bit different from the other arts and science programs we showed. Uh, instead of two four month terms, you're doing two eight month terms at one employer location um, for that full eight months. So you can go to a different employer for the second term, but you are at one employer for the full eight months. 
And you'll notice here for the Arts uh, Applied Water Science program, it is going to extend your program by a year. Um, so just keep that in mind if that's something that you're interested in. In order to be eligible for an admissions interview for Applied Water Science, it's a little bit different here, is you need to actually have a GPA overall of a 7.0 in your first year. So just need to make sure you're meeting that. You need to have the same five credits by the end of August and no more than 7.5 credits um, by the end of that August summer in order to get the admissions interview. And then to qualify for admissions into the program, you actually need to maintain that 7.0 through your fall to a term. Um, so we are gonna run interviews that fall, but we aren't gonna be able to give admissions decisions for this program until January of your second year uh, because we need to see that your fall grade still maintained that 7.0. So it's gonna be a little bit delayed. One of the other programs that we have here is our actually new computer science and data science co-op program. Uh, we had our first cohort in this program last year. We're just getting ready to do interviews for the uh, computer science and data science students for this year's cohort. Uh, and they actually have a different model as well. Uh, so you're gonna see students here when they apply to the program, uh, if they are successful, uh, you're going to see that they do three four-month work terms separately, uh, and it does extend their time in the program just by a study term, as you'll see there, that year four spring term in the bottom right corner. They are going to be coming back to classes, so it does extend it by a little bit, but really just that extra semester in order to get all of your courses in. Um, and this is, uh, again, eligible for both computer science and data science students. So in order to be eligible for this program, uh, again, you're going to be applying at the beginning of your second year. If you uh, are maintaining and getting a 7.0 GPA at the time of applying, you're going to be able to get an admissions interview. But similar to the applied water science, you need to maintain that 7.0 through your 2A semester in order to be eligible for an offer to the program. Um, the same requirements are still in place there in terms of needing a five, uh, at least five credits or and no more than 7.5. Um, but just a reminder that, again, for this program specifically, 7.0 overall, and you need to maintain that through your fall to a semester. And the last program that I'll talk about here that we have here at Laurier and our co-ops uh, is what we call our professional experience program. This program here is eligible for computer science students. Uh, and what's different for this one is you actually apply at the beginning of your third year. So all of our other programs that I mentioned, the arts and science, applied water science, and our computer science and data science, all of those programs, you're gonna be applying by the start of your second year. And we typically open up applications in March of your first year, and we send out notification to all students. You apply through the, the portal here at Laurier called Navigator, and then we're going to review your eligibility to then host interviews in the fall of your second year. What's different for the professional experience program is that you actually apply at the beginning of your third year. So it's typically something that if, let's say, for a computer science student, if you didn't get into the computer science co-op in your second year, you could apply for this in your third year. And the big difference is that you're going to be going on a 12 to 16 month work term at one employer's location for the duration of that whole term. So instead of doing three four-month terms, you're going to be at one employer for a longer period of time, uh, which can be a great opportunity to take on longer-term projects. And again, just a bit of a different experience that we offer for students here at Laurier. In order to be eligible for the professional experience program, it is different in that you don't have an admissions interview for this program, but you do still need to be meeting a GPA requirement as well as a course credit requirement. So as you'll see on the slide here, uh, students do need to have at least a 7.0 overall or a 7.0 in your honors and then a 6.5 overall. You need to have completed at least 10 credits and no more than 14 credits by the time that you apply in the fall of your third year. Uh, and the big part of this is that all co-op programs, you need to still be able to return to at least one term of full-time academics, which for us here at co-op is four courses. So I know that was a lot of information that I went over there in terms of our different co-op programs that we have available. So please feel free, you can rewind here uh, and, and listen over to the specific program that you're interested in. Um, but now I'm gonna shift our focus and talk a little bit more about the generalities of co-op the benefits, the realities of it, uh, and then share a little bit more of our, um, uh, what of our, some of our students have done through the program. So 
you may be asking yourself, what are the benefits here? Why should I participate in co-op? And the one thing that I often encourage students most about applying to co-op is that it's such a great opportunity to help explore career paths. And you may have something in mind that you wanna do, you get a job within that field for your co-op term and your eyes are open up that you realize that isn't exactly what you wanna do. So this is a chance for you to try something out for four months, come back to school, learn more, and maybe you're trying something else for your second or possibly your third work term, depending on your program. Co-op is also a great opportunity to develop your different uh, skills. So whether that be hard technical skills that you're working on that are related to your industry, or it's more of the softer skills, things like your communication, problem solving, creative thinking, uh, the chance to really apply that knowledge base that you have, develop those skills that are gonna help you in the long run after graduating and hopefully being able to secure that full-time job that you're dreaming of. Another benefit of co-op is that if you're successful through the admissions interview, and you're into co-op, we take all students through what is called our fundamentals course. This is a course that students go through where there's a series of workshops that we cover things such as resume writing, cover letter writing, interview preparation, uh, job search skills, getting ready for your first work term. We take you through all of that to build up comfort and confidence in your abilities to be successful through the application process of finding that first job. Uh, now, this is a pass-fail course that you take on top of all of your other courses, um, so it is in addition to it, but it is a really great opportunity to keep you focused, keep you on task leading up to that first work term, uh, and then you're actually going to be able to really find success from that because of the work that you put in leading up to that. On top of that fundamentals course that you're going to be taking, we're also going to be providing one-on-one -on -one support. So people such as myself, other coordinators, are gonna be able to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with you to further cater and customize your cover letter and resume. If you maybe have an interview coming up that you're really excited about and you're a little nervous, so you wanna have a mock interview, we'll have a mock interview with you. And that's a big part of what we do is help make you feel, again, more comfortable and confident in your abilities to be able to go out and get that co-op job. Uh, and lastly, one of the benefits here is we do have access to posting. So. We have a series of employers uh, as coordinators that we work with on a regular basis, and we're continuously marketing with new employers as well to be able to bring them in, post jobs directly for you as a Laurier co-op student uh, for you to compete and, and try and get that job. So those are a lot of the benefits that we have in the program. Some of the realities of co-op though that I do wanna make sure I go over here um, are listed here. So the first one I want to talk about is that employment rate. So co-op is not a guaranteed of employment. Within arts and science, we do see a really high percentage of students securing for their work terms. Uh, typically, uh, mid to high 90s uh, is what we're going to see for students being able to secure for their work term. And a lot of that, though, can be dependent on a student's ability and willingness to relocate as well. So I do want to touch on that here. A lot of our jobs you're going to see in a later slide are typically in the GTA or kind of the KW Guelph area. Um, so depending on your ability to travel and relocate for work, just keeping that in mind, you may have that dream job that's in Toronto um, and it might require moving there or it might require a longer commute. Uh, and just realizing that the benefit of that job can really outweigh sometimes that commuting cost, let's say. Um, but definitely something to consider that jobs may require you to relocate in order to be uh, possibly on-site for that work. Another reality that we have here uh, in the co-op program is that alongside the postings that we have for you to apply to, we are encouraging students to conduct their own individual and personal job search at the same time. So if you have a really kind of niche focus of what you want to get into, um, there may not be as many jobs related to that field depending on your program, so it's important for you to be active and engaged in your own personal search at the same time and have the chance to use your own network. Um, maybe you're connecting with other people, um, could be past jobs that you've held that you're reaching back out to to see if there's future opportunities. So there is a requirement to be um, doing a personal search at the same time. And a lot of what I've shared here, you may be thinking, geez, Adam, that sounds like a lot. Uh, it is, it, it's, it's an added requirement being in the co-op program. It does require that additional time and effort in order to be successful. Um, so just keeping that in mind for when you apply is realizing that it's going to take time to write those applications. It's going to take time to submit them, go to those interviews, you know, perform well. Um, but really, the old cliche is what you put in is what you're going to get out of the program as well. 
Uh, and the last thing I do want to talk about the reality for co-op is that there are fees associated with being in the program. Uh, you can find a lot of information on this on our website, but I'll mention it here briefly. Um, for the arts and science programs, uh, the term is set at $364.96 per academic term. For the water science, computer science, and data science students, it's going to be a fee of $763.87. Uh, and then for the professional experience program, it is also $763.87. But then there is an additional uh, double fee that you'll pay uh, shortly after that uh, because all of your work is being done prior to going out on your work term. Um, now, this co-op fee is assessed to, to cover a portion of the overall cost of maintaining our co-op program and also promoting the program to uh, employers as well. So a big part of what we do as co-op coordinators is reaching out to employers marketing to find those jobs, get them posted for you to apply to, um, and really try and find jobs that align with what it is that you're looking for. Excellent. So here I'll uh, cover a little bit, uh, just some average salaries that we had from last year. Uh, you'll see here typically minimum wage for the arts and science programs, um, but that can fluctuate and get a little bit higher depending on the industry that you're in or maybe the experience that you already have. So employers may be basing that based on, um, you know, skill sets that you're bringing to the job. So you can take a look at some of those salaries there. Here's just some average weekly salaries for our computer science program. So more of our technical positions, you'll see the average salary here is a little bit higher. Uh, and that is typically due to, again, the technical role that that student is filling. Um, it has a little bit more of a, a specific requirements and abilities for that position. I mentioned this a little bit already about employment sectors and I'll talk about the you know, geography and where people are working after this. Um, primarily, we have students working in the private industry. There are some students working in not-for-profit. So if that is something you're interested in as an arts and science student, definitely an option there for you. And then you'll see a range uh, mostly within academic and different levels of government that students are gonna be working as well. Here's just a brief overview. And the main highlight here is that again, most of our jobs are gonna be in the GTA or the KW Guelph Cambridge area. Um, so if you are looking for a more niche location or maybe you're uh, from out of town and you wanna stay close to home, just recognize that most of the jobs that we get posted here with Laurier students are going to be in those main geographical areas. All right, uh, so this is something I just wanna to touch briefly on, um, recognizing that you may be getting ready to go off um, um, and get involved in your community this uh, this coming term or maybe this coming summer before coming to Laurier, which I hope you do. Um, so I just want to talk about the value that volunteering can bring to you as a candidate, um, not only for the admissions interview, but also just in terms of um, your abilities in securing work, whether it be for co-op or not. Uh, volunteering can be a really great way to build up your skill set, gain more experience um, during times when finding a job could be difficult. And I know right now there's a lot happening around the world and there are people that need our support and need our help. So if there are ways for you to safely engage in volunteering in your community, um, you know, I, I, I do recommend that. It's a chance, as I said before, build up that experience, build up those skill sets, and again, just leads to being more comfortable and confident uh, in the work that you're doing. Alrighty. So here I just wanna highlight some of the jobs that we've seen students participate in in the past. Um, up here in the top left corner, you're gonna see one of our kin students working at the Parkwood Suites, um, doing some programming for that community. Uh, you've got some students in the bottom left working at our Parks Canada, doing some uh, interpretation for, for um, uh, tourists and other youth groups that came through. Uh, you have a student there that is not a shark. Um, I'm pretty sure, I hope it's not a shark, uh, that the student there in the middle is a biology student who is working with Ontario Power Generation um, doing some assessment in the local area that they were working in. Uh, and then on the two right-hand sides there, uh, those are a couple of our computer science students that um, had been working in kind of software developer roles for uh, the last couple summers. And also here's some of our art students. Uh, in the top left corner, we actually have a psychology student who is doing some policy research um, for a summer term. The bottom left, uh, that student was had a digital marketing assistantship role. Um, really great opportunity there. You can see the student in the middle is a history student who is doing some archiving um, and going through collections. Uh, and then on the right hand side, you're gonna see one of our students who was able to present actually at a conference um, 
after the research that they were doing for their summer co-op term. And then our student in the bottom right there uh, was working at a dermal therapy research center. So lots of different range of opportunities here for different roles that students can get into. Um, and again, it's very much dependent on the industry that you're interested in. So I've just again got a more of a list here of different jobs that you can get into. Got another page here for you. Um, whether it be technical, whether it be not-for-profit, uh, whether it be environmentally focused, you know, co-op has a range of opportunities for you um, and, and different ways for you to get involved and, and build up those experiences. So uh, I'm excited at this point to share with you, um, we have Laura Weber. She's one of our kin students here, as I mentioned, just wrapped up um, her term this past summer for her second and final work term. Uh, and all I'll say is that uh, Laura has been a wonderful co-op student here in the program. I had the pleasure of doing a work term visit with her this summer um, and excited for her to share a little bit about her experience. So I'll invite uh, Laura to share with us now. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, as Adam mentioned, my name's Laura. I'm a fourth year kinesiology student with a management option. So I have now completed both of my work terms through the co-op program. Um, my terms were unique in that they weren't science-based. So um, I was able to complete two work terms at software companies. So the first one, I worked at BlackBerry as an IT project coordination student. Um, and then my most recent term this past summer was at D2L as a technology enablement coordinator. So D2L is the company that um, operates my learning space. So that was a really cool experience for me. Um, in terms of finding those jobs, uh, I was lucky enough to find my first co-op job during primary round, which happens um, the first couple weeks of recruiting. So I applied through Navigator um, and I got an interview and um, luckily I got my job that way. But I really relied on um, my personal network. So I reached out to my family, friends and um, my neighbor actually referred me to apply to BlackBerry, said that they have a really great program. So I was really motivated to apply there and I got in. Um, my second job was a little bit of a different experience. I did find another job um, through the primary round. However, due to COVID, um, really late in the game around early April. So I was supposed to start my job first week of May. Um, early April, I got a call saying, unfortunately, they couldn't keep me on and I lost my job. So then um, I got a taste of continuous round two. So during that round, um, same strategies, I relied on my personal network, reached out to family and friends, but um, it was hard because a lot of companies were kind of shifting and um, didn't know if they were hiring. So then I went back to Navigator, applied to all of the jobs, um, utilized the incredible support from the co-op department and my co-op coordinators and landed the job at D2L. Um, so that's how I got both of my jobs. I would say that um, I think that the reasons why I was so fortunate to be able to get those jobs right off the bat in primary round was definitely because um, I reached out to people I knew and kind of got a sense of what kind of jobs were out there for students and then um, I knew what I wanted to apply to and wasn't limited to just the navigator postings because um, everyone applies to the navigator postings. So it really helps if you can kind of go into recruiting knowing what you want, not even um, a specific job, but I knew that I wanted to stay in Waterloo. Um, it was important to me to be able to live in Waterloo and save a little bit of money since I already live here. Um, so I made sure that I researched companies in Waterloo, different roles that I could apply to, and then that's how I approached recruiting. Um, but overall, the experience of co-op was um, really beneficial for me. It gave me a lot of real world experience going through that application process, creating resumes, cover letters, um, networking, and then just like working in a real world environment. Um, it made me a lot more confident now that I'm in my fourth year, um, getting ready to apply to jobs after school, um, getting ready for life after university. I feel that co-op has really prepared me for that. Um, 
And yeah, I have some advice for future co-op students. Um, just keep an open mind when you come into the co-op program. Like Adam said, you might have a really clear idea of what you want to do, um, what you want to do after school. But for me, I know that that vision has changed multiple times since starting the co-op program, um, from preparing to apply to the co-op program and getting that volunteer experience to be a competitive applicant to finishing both my co-op terms and talking to people in the industry and figuring out what kind of pathways I need to take to get where I want to go to. It's really changed my um, outlook on my plan for after school. So definitely worthwhile. It shows you kind of where you might want to end up after school um, and then prepares you as well. So overall, co-op is a really great experience and I would definitely recommend it for um, anyone in arts and science for sure. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Laura. And um, for those that are listening at home right now, I think that, you know, big kudos to Laura. It can be a really challenging time, especially with things that are happening in the world right now. Um, but the perseverance to continue seeking and, and working hard, it, it can really pay off, as she's mentioned, and, and the opportunities that are out there to just explore and, and try new things. So thank you so much for joining us today and, and sharing more about your experience. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Alrighty, folks. Well, that's that's all we had planned for you here today. Um, you know, thank you again for joining us here. Uh, a lot of information is on our website there, so please do take a look. You can follow along there. Um, more information about the different programs, admissions conditions, things like that. More of the detail side of it. This is very much a bit of a surface level here. Uh, we do host for first year students at Laurier. We're going to have these information sessions again uh, during your time at Laurier. So that way, it, again, it's a refresher, but this is kind of an early look at the co-op program. Um, I've got my email down there, so please feel free to reach out if you do have questions. Um, and whether it's me or I can direct you to somebody else to answer them, but happy to answer questions for you. And really, thank you again for joining. Hope you have, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of the virtual open house and attend other sessions. And, um, you know, hopefully we can see you here at Laurier in the future. So. Thank you very much, folks, and I hope you have a great day.